because I've been defrauded before. I've been faced with a Ponzi scheme before, whereby people from church, actually people from church, who raise their hands every Sunday, they worship, they talk rabba rabba rabba, all those things. Hello friends, welcome to another episode of my life experiences. My name is Wes Nyaniwa Sosola, your usual host. Happy New Year. I hope you enjoyed the festive season and you are ready to conquer the year 2023 with a bang. As some of you are setting goals, you are setting your objectives, others are trying to develop a roadmap on how to conquer the year 2023. And usually this time of the year, the mood is so positive, expectations are so high. Other people are thinking about getting new jobs. Other people are thinking about uh, seeking out new investment opportunities. And talking about investment opportunities, today I would like to bring to light, to bring aware awareness to one of the risks that may be associated with new investment opportunities, new investors. And this risk is called the Ponzi scheme. You've heard me right, a Ponzi scheme. So basically, a Ponzi scheme is a form of a fraud or a scam whereby the perpetrators, they create belief in, a, in an unexistent uh, enterprise, in an existent business. So they may come to you, they sell, uh, they sell you this business proposition. Madam, sir, we've got this business. When you invest your money in this business, you are going to get so much returns. And usually, the kind of returns that they sell to you, they are abnormal profits, higher than normal. In a normal situation, whereby if you invest in a risk-free investment, in a kind of investment that Usually you get 9% per annum or 3%, 4%, not even more than 15% uh, per annum. But they may be telling you that we'll be giving you 20% in two months. 20% of your investment as profit. So it sounds really ridiculous, but since you've got a desire, you've got a yearning to invest your money, and you look at this, you usually fall into that kind of trap and you put in your money in that uh, an existent uh, investment and usually these people may have all the papers in place business papers which may seem to be legit they may have the backing of witnesses they may have uh, maybe lawyers behind them and when you see all that you are easily taken up to see well this is really um, a legit business whereas in real sense it's just a business on paper it doesn't exist so when you invest your money in this, the money that you invest, it's used to finance investors who entered the scheme earlier than you. So in two months time or in a month time or as agreed, they just give you the 20% profit just to use it as a pawn for you to believe that this is a legitimate investment. Look, I've got my initial uh, return. And you may take more of your money and reinvest in that business. And the cycle of the scheme keeps going, going, and going, just like that. But there comes a time when the scheme cannot self-finance anymore. That happens when maybe the perpetrators, they eat up all the money, or they cannot find new clients to invest in that scheme. And when that happens, you lose out the money, or hell breaks loose. So that's what happens in a... A Ponzi scheme. Something for you as a new, somebody who is considering making new investment to be on the lookout for. Trust your instincts. When somebody is selling you a business idea, really ask the questions, all the difficult questions. You may even go to the tax authorities to check out if, if their taxpayer identification number is existent. You may go to the registrar for businesses and they ask if their business is um really registered to find out where is the physical address where do they operate which are your offices and so on and so forth just to find out and even talk to other people other investors that's the kind of background and due diligence that i may request you uh, to do when you are, are, are approached by such kind of um, business propositions because usually they sound so lucrative the profits are so high and so attractive. A lot of people, they fail to do the due diligence and they fall into the trap. They invest. They're just given an initial return. Then later on, in the future, 
they fail to recoup their capital investment. So that's a Ponzi scheme. Now, I just want to share with you the typical characteristics of some of these perpetrators. Some of these perpetrators usually are people that you know, people that you know, they try as much as possible when they sniff you out that you are hungry for an investment, your circle of friends, they infiltrate it and penetrate it and befriend you. And just to end your trust, when they do that, you, you, you are easily duped, you are easily uh, trapped in their scheme. And sometimes these people are also very articulate. They have perfected their craft. They know their business so well. When they are explaining to you, you are easily convinced because they are so articulate. They know what happens in the sort of scheme that they are doing. And most of the times they front a likable personality. They being dishing out gifts. They may be doing, you know, philanthropic sort of behaviors just to attract more people to develop this um, likable personality. People may trust them. And they earn the trust of many people so that that trust, it does cover up their treachery. It cover up all the fraud that is doing. They are doing. So what happens is, when you are defrauded, when you are scammed, and you bring up your, your complaint to people, they believe them more than they could believe you. They may say, no, this person is so nice, they cannot do that, such a thing, just because of the type of people that they are. They are so cunning like that. They have just perfected their craft. No matter how, what you do, it doesn't face them at all because they were expecting that in the first place, that people will complain. It doesn't face them. They just move on with their life. Why you are there complaining? So when you face such kind of a, a scam, how do you handle it? There are so many ways, depending on the kind of person that you are. Getting it to uh, as a criminal case, uh, reporting to the police, you may do that. If you want to recover your money, take it to court as a civil case. But usually these kinds of the people, they may um, present themselves as if they don't have assets. They make their own invest personal investment they don't make it in the public eye and when you go to court they may just claim that they are bankrupt and when you want to get your money through the civil way you find that the person is bankrupt you can't get your money but one negotiable thing that you have to do is to set boundaries detach yourself from those kinds of people they are manipulative people you just have to set those boundaries and you have to move on your way you may get debt collectors to try to collect your debt if they don't do that Sometimes, as a last resort, what you may want to do is just to accept the loss. You accept the loss. This is my loss. Sometimes you lose. Sometimes you win in life. I hope that I've learned a lesson and I'll be careful next time. I'll not just uh, invest like that. I'll do my due diligence and I'm going to do my homework. And you leave the case like that. You live with your loss. And guys, what I'm talking about now as I've said repeatedly on this uh, channel that I always try as much as possible to keep it real. When I'm presenting information to you guys, I'm keeping it real. I'm talking from my life experiences because I've been defrauded before. I've been faced with a Ponzi scheme before whereby people from church, actually people from church who raise their hands every Sunday, they worship, they talk rabba, 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 all those things. They approached me, they get millions of money, they just give me a, a, a something like a, a, a small return, then I invest more money in that business, then the money is gone, no more returns to me. I lost millions of money. This is just from real life experience, and I hope I had done more, uh, more research on these guys. But I said... I don't want to pursue this case anymore. I don't want it to go the criminal court um, way. I don't want it to go to civil case. I don't want to engage any debt collectors at this point. I just managed to recover a, just a small portion of what I had invested in millions of money. I recovered a small portion. Then I just accepted the loss. This is my loss. God had blessed me with this money. I'm going to trust him to bless me again. Perhaps this was a lesson that was teaching me for something else and also for this person to be on my ladder for prayers. Because ever since that time, I'm always praying for these people. God, may you meet these people. May you meet them at their point of need. 
may they meet the man of the cross so that when they are going into that church to pray, they may do it, be doing it for real. When they are raising their hands, they may be doing it for real. May they meet the man of the cross. That is my prayer every time. So sometimes I say, well, I was duped. Maybe it was just to uh, force me to pray for these people to know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. The last point that I want to make is that if something sounds too good to be true, probably it is. If you venture into that kind of business, if you, are, if you are deciding to go into that kind of business opportunities and it sounds too good to be true, it probably is. Trust your instincts. Trust that small voice that you are hearing. Trust it and don't go with that investment. When you are investing your money, you need to be at peace. You should have peace of mind. You should have peace in the heart. You should be feeling it that this really is a blessing from the Lord. Because blessings from the Lord, they come with peace. They come with peace. I just want to finish with the verse on Matthew 5, verse 44, which says, But I say to you, love your enemies, bless those who curse you, do good to those who hate you, and you pray for those who spitefully use you that you may be sons of your father in heaven. You have to pray for those who spitefully use you. Do good to your enemies. So if somebody does this to you, remember to forgive because you are uh, sons of your father in heaven. I hope this message has just helped somebody this new year as you are contemplating investing your money in new businesses. You are contemplating investing your money uh, in new opportunities so that you should not lose it in a bottomless pit. These are some of the issues for you to consider. Thank you so much, guys. I hope this episode, the first one, has been of help to you. Thank you so much, guys. Don't forget to like, to subscribe, and to share. Stay blessed. Oh,